Good afternoon, I'm Wendy Petrie and this is your Midday News Fix for Friday the 26th of July. The lawyer who gave advice to an Otago religious care facility about the destruction of records that were of interest to the abuse and care inquiry accepts it's appalling. Presbyterian support Otago sought advice from Fraser Barton, who was a board member at the time and is now president of the Law Society. There are claims the records were destroyed to protect the reputation of the organisation. Barton is now subject to a formal complaint. He's told RNZ he wrote an 11-word email advising that records could be destroyed at an appropriate time. But he believed that would be after the death of those discussed in the records. My advice was to destroy them at an appropriate time. That's not go ahead and destroy them now. You know, from a practical point of view, you must have the files so you can deal with claims. The Regulation Minister says people in early childhood tell them they're sick of the amount of red tape and regulation. Labour, Te Pāti Māori and the Greens have united against the Regulation Ministry's regulatory review. They claim the government's making dangerous changes. The NZI Union is also calling for it to stop. Regulation Minister David Seymour says it's the first time the opposition has united around something this term. They say that they want to stop dangerous changes But we haven't even announced a single change yet. We're still just listening to people. Labour's leader says there's a cause for minor parties to dial down their political rhetoric. Speaking on the Tiles podcast, Chris Hipkins was asked about the language used by potential coalition partners, the Greens and Te Pāti Māori. The latter have this year called the reversal of smoke-free law system genocide. Hipkins says other parties are also guilty of unhelpful language. I think the ACT Party in New Zealand first also need to dial it down a bit. I think Māori are being used as a wedge in New Zealand in a way that's really unfair and I don't think it's going to be good for New Zealand in the longer term. A highly divisive speech from Benjamin Netanyahu as thousands protest his visit to the US. The Israeli Prime Minister is meeting Vice President Kamala Harris today. His talks to the US Congress yesterday were boycotted by dozens of senior lawmakers over his role facilitating the war and humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. US correspondent Mitch McCann says in contrast, Republicans who showed up were largely supportive. Some people called it epic, whereas the Democrats were unhappy with it. Nancy Pelosi called it one of the worst speeches from a foreign dignitary invited to speak to the Congress. Security forces are highly visible on the streets of Paris as the official opening ceremony for the Olympics draws closer. Track cyclist Aaron Gate and sailing athlete Joe Arlay have been named as New Zealand's official flag bearers. Herald reporter Cherie Kinnear is on the ground in Paris and says tourists are flooding the city. With the boosted population, she says it's more demanding for authorities. Lots of sirens, lots of security, lots of police vans lined up in many places. So there is a huge, huge presence here, but it is for a good thing. It is making people feel really safe as well. In sport, a devastating exit from the medal contention for the All Black Sevens at the Paris Olympics. The men defeated 14-7 in the quarterfinals by South Africa. The Football Ferns lost their opening match of the Games, beaten 2-1 by defending champions Canada, who had been found guilty of spying via drone in the build-up. And Black Caps all-rounder Ratchan Ravindra has reaffirmed his commitment to playing for his country amid the rise of global T20 franchise leagues. I'm Wendy Petrie and that is your latest news fix.